Where am I? So we're going to look at while and if else loops today. And if you want to program a while loop, um, then here's how you do it. It's it's a structure within robot C. It allows code to be repeated. So you would type in while, then you would give some type of condition. Note there is no semicolon. That's an important thing. You don't want to put that in there. And then you're going to have a couple curly braces with whatever you want to be repeated over and over and over inside here while that condition is met. So there are th oh, there's always going to be three parts. You have the word while, you have the condition, and the commands. Um, so again, here's while. The condition is, uh, while it's true, while this thing is happening, then you're going to go into these commands. If this is not true inside here, then it jumps all the way to the bottom of this. So you need to make sure that you're clear about what your condition is going to be. And the condition is checked every time the loop repeats. So once we get to the bottom, it will come back up to here and check to see if that's still true. So then here is your repeated commands. Um, while loops and if else loops are based on Boolean logic, and that just means it's only two possible answers, yes or no. So that's pretty much all there is. So that is called a truth value. Now here's an example of that. If you want the sonar sensor to be greater than 45, and generally sonar is in centimeters, so 45 centimeters. You're checking to see if an object is more than 45 centimeters away. If it is, then it will do whatever is in that while loop. If it's not, once it gets to the end of that loop and it checks again, then it'll say false and it'll jump out of it. So this would be if it's greater. You could also put a exactly equal to. So again, note that you need to have two equal signs. So if you put if it's exactly equal to 45 centimeters, you want to have some object be exactly that distance. That's a terrible idea, by the way, for sonar. It's not that precise. So here's a, a table. You probably want to come back to this um, for comparisons that you'll use. Double equals is exactly equal to. Um, and that's really only good for switches where it's exactly zero or exactly one. Um, for analog things like sonar and encoder and a potentiometer, you don't really want to do the exactly equal to. It's better to use the less than um, or the inequalities. And then you also have a not equals option here too. So you can pause this if you want to take a look at this chart. If you're going to assign conditions, let's see, we want to assign a condition while the bump switch is not depressed. The flashlight comes on when it's dark and turns off when it's light. So as long as the button is not pushed, so you're saying while sensor value, and you're always going to have to put the word sensor value if you want to use some type of sensor in here. Um, that's oftentimes forgotten, so come back to this slide if you need to get to that. But um, you're going to type in sensor value, capital V, and then in square brackets you put the name of the sensor, and then you put your Boolean logic. So this, in this case, it's exactly equal to zero. That means that the switch is not being pushed. So as long as the switch is not pushed, it's like a deactivation switch. Then until it's a wait, until dark means wait until. Wait until it's dark, then turn flashlight on. So the flashlight's going to be on. And then you wait until it's light, and then the flashlight turns off. And at that point, it would come back up to here and see, is the bump switch still not pushed? And if it's still not pushed, then it will go through this again. And it's always going to be waiting until the dark and light. Another way that you can control loops is with timers. If you want to, well, where would we, where would the wait statement go if we wanted the loop to repeat for a controlled amount of time? If you want it to be timed, um, we need to use something else. And so we have an internal stopwatch, a timer. Uh, they should always be cleared before they're being used. And you need to be careful where you clear it, not in the middle of a timing statement. So here's an example of one. The first time that you use it, you'd want to clear the timer. And so the code for that is just clear timer. and then the name of the timer, and the timer's names are preset, T1, T2, T3, and T4. So you're not going to have to rename those. Now we're going to say while time 1, and then that's kind of the sensor value thing, brackets T1, while that is less than 30,000 milliseconds, and it's always going to be in milliseconds. So that's while less than 30 seconds. So that's a, a key thing to remember. While that's happening, it runs this code. And it's going to be constantly checking to see if the sensor value of the bumper is pushed in, that's a 1. Or if the limit switch is pushed in, that's a 1. It's going to be constantly checking for those things for only 30 seconds. This is a great um, code to use if you want to make like a toy, uh, maybe uh, like a stuffed animal toy or something, and you put some robotics in it, and you push the button and it does something for a certain amount of time, and then it stops. 
Um, that's a great, a great place where you might want to use a timer if you're thinking about making some type of toy. So now we're getting down into the if and else statements. If statements in the program are evaluated by the condition contained in the parentheses. If it's true, then everything in the braces run. If it's not, then it's ignored and it would go down to an else statement. It's similar to the way a while loop works, but it doesn't repeat it. So that's an important thing. If you want something to repeat, use a while. If you want it to just check for this or this, then you use an if else. And so here would be an example of an if else, I guess. Um, an if would be just checking for one, one um, statement, one thing, and then it would go beyond that. And if else checks for that one thing, if that's not true, it goes to the next option, and then it goes beyond. So here's an example of that. If this condition is true or false, or if it's true, sorry, then it would do these things. If it's false, it does these things. So that's why they say if condition true, it does this, else, which means it's false, and it goes down to here. Um, if you want to use two separate if-else statements, then you got to be really careful that they don't conflict with each other because the one if might turn something on and the other else might turn it off. Here's an example of that. So if this, in this example, if one of the touch sensors is pressed, the right motor is turned on in one of the if-else statements and turned off in the other. So here's a loop while one is exactly equal to one. Why would we want to have that for a loop? Well, how often is one equal to one? All the time. So one is equal to one all the time, this loop will run forever. And you're going to use those kind of loops a lot because you're going to want your, maybe you want your program to just run indefinitely and it's waiting for inputs, it's waiting for sensors. So it just kind of sits there, but the code is still, is still looking and searching. That's where you would use a while one equals one loop. And note again, that's two equal signs. So the first condition, if the sensor value bumper, the bump switch is pushed in, that's a one, then we start the motor. If it's not, well, we don't have to worry about that because we're going to say that we push the bump switch in. So the motor is started. And now it comes down to here. If the limit switch is pushed in, then it turns, reverses the motor. But if the limit switch is not pushed in, it will stop that same right motor. So if you have the bumper pushed in, the right motor turns on. But if the limit switch is not pushed in, then it tries to stop the motor at the same time. So the motor is going to be like, uh, 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 and it's going to be trying to turn on and off and on and off. Or another example of why this is a terrible code is if you have the bump switch pushed in and the limit switch pushed in, what's going to happen here? Right motor forward and right motor reverse. So it's going to be freaking out on you. So this is an example of where you have if-else statements that are conflicting. Now you can fix this if you embed one into the other. So this gets a little bit tricky, so you might want to pause this after I explain it and just kind of digest this a little bit. So we have our same while loop. Now let's just read through this. If the bump switch is pushed in, the motor's on. And then we're, we're there, we're good. So then we don't even have to look at the else, because all we have is the if. But if the bump switch is not pushed in, if the bumper is not in, then we go to the else statement. And now we start checking for the next thing. So they have embedded an if-else statement in here. You've got to be really careful with your brackets when you do this. So if you decide that you want to do that, have it check for two sensors, then maybe come back to this presentation and, and take a look at this. So else, now we're going to do another one. If the limit switch is pushed in, move the motor in reverse. So we can't have the bump switch pushed in and the limit. If the bump is pushed in, this starts and won't even come down here, won't even read the else. If it's not pushed in, it reads this one and now we start checking for these things. So then it's looking for the limit. If that's in, the motor is reversed. If it's not, then the motor is stopped. Um, there is a second option um, besides an embedded and this seems easier for my brain to figure out. That's using an else if. Um, and in this case, so, so we're looking at the right-hand side over here because we just went over the left. If, again, we're in a while loop, if the bumper's pushed in, start it. If it's not, we go down to the else if. So now it's doing else, check the next thing. That's basically what that means, check the next thing. If the limit switch is pushed in, reverse it. But if that's not true, then we come down here to the final else and then we stop the motor. So check one, check two. If neither one nor two are true, then we go down here to the else and that's stop motor. So we're getting pretty complicated with these. Uh, you may not have you know, embedded if-else statements in yours, and that's totally fine. You don't have to. But if you want to try to really do something complicated and you're looking for you know, checking one or two or three sensors, then you're probably going to be using if-else statements or else-if statements. And that's it.